Hey Budge, I'm not sure if red wine and making videos quite mixes to you. I didn't think so. Crafty here, and some old school poetry. I don't know what I'm gonna have for visuals during the course of this video. You'll get what I give to you though. Huh. Which is a poem that I just want to rattle off. It's not in my head fully, but uh, two thirds of the poem is memorized. You've already heard a little bit. Here's what I know so far. The Tower. What shall I do with this absurdity, O oh heart, O oh troubled heart? This caricature, decrepit age that has been tied to me as to a dog's tail. Never had I more excited, passionate, fantastical imagination, nor an ear and eye that more expected the impossible. No, not in boyhood when with rod and fly or the humbler worm I climbed Bell Bulbin's back and had the live long summer day to spend. It seems I must bid the muse go peck and choose Plato or Plotinus as a friend. Until imagination, ear and eye, must be content with argument or deal in abstract things or else be derided by a battered sort of kettle and heel. I pace along the battlements and stare on the foundation of a house or where a tree like a sooty finger starts from the earth and send imagination forth under the day's declining beam and call images or memories from ruin or from ancient trees for I would ask a question of them all. Beyond that ridge lived Miss French and once when every silver candlestick in sconce had lit the dark mahogany and wine, a serving man that could divine that most respected lady's every wish ran, and with the garden shears clipped an insolent farmer's ears. Some few remembered still when I was young, a peasant girl commended by a song, who'd lived somewhere upon that rocky place, and praised the color of her face, and had the greater joy in praising her, remembering that if they walk there, the farmers jostled at the fair, so great a glory did the song confer. And certain men, being maddened by those rhymes, or else by toasting her a score of time, rose from the table and declared it right to test their fancy by their fight. But they mistook the brightness of the moon for the prosaic light of day. Music had driven their wits astray, and one was drowned in the great bog of gloom. Strange, but the man who made the song was blind, yet now that I have considered it, I find that nothing strange. With the tragedy began with Homer, and that was a blind man, and Helen has all living hearts betrayed. Oh, may the moon and sun might seem one inextricable beam, for if I triumph, I must make men mad. And I myself created Hanrahan and drove him drunk or sober and through the dawn from somewhere in the neighboring cottages, caught in an old man's jugglery's. He stumbled, tumbled, fumbled to and fro and had but broken knees for hire and horrible splendor of desire. I thought it all out twenty years ago. Good fellow shuffled cards in an old barn, and when that ancient ruffian's turn was on, he so glitched the cards under his thumb that all but one card became a pack of hounds and not a pack of cards, and that he changed into a hare. Hanrahan rose in frenzy there and followed up those baying creatures towards, oh, towards, I have forgotten what. I must recall a man that neither love nor music nor an enemy's clipped ear could he was so harried cheer. A figure that has grown so fabulous, there's not a neighbor left to say that when he finished his dog's day, an ancient bankrupt master of this house. That's all I have memorized, but it's pretty good, so here comes the rest. Before that ruin came, for centuries, rough men at arms cross garnered to the knees, are shod in iron, climbed the narrow stairs, and certain men at arms there were, whose images the great memory stored, came with a loud cry and panting breast to break upon a sleeper's rest, while the great wooden dice beat on the board. And I would question all, come all who can, come old necessitous half-mounted men, and bring beauty's blind rambling celebrant, the red man the juggler sent, through God-forsaken meadows, Miss French gifted with so fine an ear, the man drowned in the bog's mire when mocking muses chose the country wench. Did all old men and women rich and poor who trod upon these rocks or past this door, whether in public or in secret rage, as I do now against old age. But I have found an answer in those eyes that are impatient to be gone. So therefore, but leave Hanrahan, for I need all his mighty memories.
O lecher with the love on every wind, bring up out of that deep considering mind all that you have discovered in the grave. For it is certain that you have reckoned up every on for known, unseen plunge, lured by a softening eye or by a touch or a sigh into the labyrinth of another's being. Does the imagination dwell the most upon a woman won or a woman lost? If on the lost, admit you turned aside from a great labyrinth out of pride, cowardice, or some silly over subtle thought, or anything called conscious once, and that if a memory occur, the sun's under eclipse and the day blotted out. Yeah. Uh -huh.